I feel like all the cars are so loud. And let's just take part of the plant. You know, we may have one down there. All right. Blooming from a different, from a bigger plant. Uh, we were gonna do plant sex today, but Joe's busy here, um, so we're just doing a little bit of foreplay. Is that what is that what we called it? Foreplay? Yeah, that's a good way. Okay. We're gonna tease it up a little bit. Yeah, so. teaser. That's what it is. Okay, we're gonna take over what the bees are doing. So that little bee is moving the pollen over, which is the male part of the flower, moving the pollen over to the female part of the flower. Whether he's doing it with his legs or actually moving the stuff over, I really haven't paid much attention to how the bees are working, but you can see his little beak going down there and pulling the pollen out of there, or the nectar out of there. And while he's walking around, he's gonna be transferring that pollen onto the female parts of the flower. The pollen would be like the sperm, basically. Female part, like the vagina. So we're gonna show what this does. This is a, these, Some of these are spent flowers, like this here. The flower's done, so if the bee did its job, it, after it loses its petals, then it turns, these are the seed pods. So basically, the bee has to do its job in order to create this. If the bee doesn't do its job, the flower will just fall off and there'll be nothing, no seed pod there. A lot of the plants that they do nowadays are considered sterile, so they won't have both female and male parts to create the seed pod. So any plant flowers, male, female, you have some plants are male, some plants are females, Last week, you and I took a walk and looked at some of the Nepenthes that were starting to bloom. Since then, a lot more buds have formed and some have opened up. And I haven't really noticed there's a female flower yet on any of them, but there's a lot of male flowers out there. How do you tell the difference between a female flower and a we'll, male flower? We'll try to get on, on most plants, they're, they're, they have both parts. Just a few plants have males and females. So, but either, if, sometimes I've had people come to me and say, I think you sold me a male plant because the hibiscus you bought from you isn't blooming. The, the plant itself has nothing to do with the, whether it's a male or female, whether it blooms. Both will always bloom because you need the sperm or the pollen. I'm just doing this in realistic terms for more people to understand maybe. You need the pollen to be able to transfer to the female part with the vagina kind of thing if it was a person or an animal. What we're going to do now is we're going to hybridize. Hybridizing is taking basically two plants that have positive traits for maybe two different things or trying to create a different color is just crossing them over. It'd be like, I don't know what nationality you are, you don't need to say, it doesn't matter, but I'm French and... I'm Polish. Okay, well you're Polish. Mm -hmm. So if I wanted to keep my genes in French, I would marry somebody and have sex with somebody French. You don't have to marry them to have sex, but I would stay with somebody else that's French. But if I had sex with you, then now our genes are not pure, but the baby coming out or the seed pod because your baby is a seed even though the egg is inside you the baby is a seed the seed develops just like you plant the seed the seed develops into a person i know it's still a person when it's a baby but it's still not the same as it is in three years when it's a newborn it's just not it doesn't even look the same really to understand what i'm saying so what we're going to do is we would cross pollinate so if we had um heavy traits heavy genes and if we were in ancient times when they tried to you're matching up with that daughter over there so that they could try to keep the genes at a certain level basically and that's what we're doing with the plants we're going to head to the back and, and go do that now okay so unfortunately where our larger hibiscus was that i wanted to use for display was close to the road so it was too noisy up there so what we did is we took some flowers off of a couple others brought them down here it's a little quieter um so these are tropical hibiscus it's gonna these are really easy to see the male and the female parts basically of the, of the flower so we can um, do some pollinating of as of these here so which are the male and female parts right okay so here would be the pollen which would be the male parts of the flower and then up here would be the female parts of the flower so what we want to do is transfer this to here we would usually use a q-tip or take part of another flower off of it and pollinate that way in this case, we've already removed all our flowers, so we'll just use another piece of the flower. Now, to create a hybrid, we would cross two colors that we like to see what kind of colors we would get. Just like we talked about, if a Polish person and a French person had had a baby, then you don't know what they're gonna come out to be. I mean, they were gonna be a mixture of the two. Would well, you think it'd be easier to explain it like a white person and like a black person? Because then they have a mixed baby. Yeah, then you can do that. And sometimes the baby comes out more 
brown like, or light colored or, or darker. Or colored. Yeah, you never know. You never know what you're going to get until that, it's that seed comes out, basically. Right. So until the thing hatches. So in this case, you won't know what it is, but it's based on the plant's growth and stuff like that. If you're trying to do a growth, uh, you know, different growth rates or stuff, or if you're looking for the bloom, you won't know what till what the bloom looks like until the bloom comes out. So cross pollinating, you just don't know what you're going to get when you make a seed. So when you say, oh, I want to make some more of these pink ones and you bought on eBay, somebody had this pink one here, they're selling hibiscus seeds that were pink, you're not going to get pink. You might get pink and probably will get pink because this is a pretty dominant color in this species. So you're going to get whatever the bees cross pollinated their seeds to, their, their pollen to, to create whatever it's going to end up being once the seeds sprout. These here are Cajun hibiscus, which are developed by a company in Louisiana and they are very expensive hibiscus. They probably started a lot of these out by seed by hybridizing different ones to, to cross pollinate, get different colors. We have a lot of different uh, Cajun hibiscus. Once they produce that plant, if it's got different colors, that's when they would put a patent on it so that I can't propagate from it. However, if I cross pollinate these two and I get seeds from it and I sprout the seeds like we did before, the seeds would break the patent on that. I can't call it their colors and I can't call it Cajun anymore. But I would have maybe, maybe I would get this exact color. Maybe it would come out this color. Maybe it would come out, who knows what colors would come into this thing as when, I, when you cross them over. Now, if I cross pollinated the two of the same light colors together, there's a very good chance I would end up with this color in there. But back in the genes, going back in history from when this was being produced, there's other colors that are in here. You're gonna have the yellow, you're gonna have the gray. So you, some of the new blooms coming out from the seeded ones may be pure yellow, may be pure gray, may be red. Red is the most dominant color in all the hibiscus. It's just like, so sometimes like in a family, a, a great grandparent may be, um, had sex like a white great grandparent maybe had sex with uh, a black person but their kid was born light colored and then like two generations go by and the great grandkid uh has a baby with another white person thinking that they're both white and then the baby comes out brown a lot of yeah, a lot of divorces born. happen that way because they're like why is this baby a different color than you and i are and it actually comes into play that you know a great grandparent actually right, you know and right genes, it's right. kind of the it's kind of the right. same you're like gonna get, you could get something from you the can get something different right you exactly don't know what you're gonna get when you're getting it by a seed right so when you're buying seeds unless they are from a large company like burpee like park like harris any of those big huge companies they have controlled environment of pollinating the plants then you're going to get the same is we're going to take the pollen off of this one here we're not going to be, of course, we're not going to see seed pods on this, but we'll do this on a begonia in a minute. But this here is the pollen part, and that's the female part up here. Same thing here, pollen, female. So if we we're able to keep these attached to the plant so that they could produce a seed pod, what we do is take the pollen here and kind of rub it onto the female parts as much as we can within reason. And now we get the pink pollen on here. Okay, so then on this one, we're going to take this uh, Cajun hibiscus and rub it onto... And this one shows really good actually because it's got the, the red r with the orange on there. Mm. And you can go down in the thing. What's going to happen me, is this, um... you'll be able to get in here in one second. Whoops, I'm, now I'm cross pollinating because not only that, but I can, I'm also taking some of the pollen I just put here and I was rubbing it the wrong way. So some of that was going on there too. So now this will go down this tube. And if, it, if it's going to make it, it'll go down into this tube and it'll fertilize what is down in here down back here. This is where the seed pod would generate, is where the, these leaves are. And if it worked, and of so course- So the seeds are gonna form down here, you said? They would create a ball. And we're gonna go to a begonia in a minute that's already done all this process by nature doing it with the bees. So this would create a ball, and it might take three months for that ball to form and develop and then get ripe. You have to wait till it's ripe before you harvest the seed. Just like you have to wait till your child is in your belly is ripe before you harvest the seed. If it's too soon, nowadays we have ways to hopefully save that. But you want to wait till it's as ripe as it can be before you go to plant, you harvest it. Then you harvest it, you plant it, and it grows from there. So, um, it, and you could take this and you could, we did it with this one with the pink, but we could also take this one here with the red one. And yes, it's like having sex with two different partners. So it had a, like a little three way. But what's going to happen now is you've introduced both the pink and the red and it's mother color. So now you've created a lot more colors in here. 
usually I wouldn't use a red to do this because in this plant, red is dominant. Pink is second to dominant. Uh, every single plant that there is out there, there's certain colors that are dominant. So uh, you'll find that red hibiscus tend to grow taller and faster than this variety of hibiscus or yellow or a peach. Uh, pink grows second fastest usually because it's a very strong, powerful in its, in its genes and in its species. So is it this, so the red plants kind of like somebody with brown eyes, no matter if they have sex with somebody with blue eyes or green eyes or brown eyes, they're usually going to have a brown eyed kid because they're the dominant right. color. Right. That's a good way to put it because I forgot about the eyeballs. So, <laughs> but yeah, red is very dominant. Now this is not regular red though. So because this is an off red, it's a bright red. It's different. It's more of a, um, this is more of a sought after red than the basic, what they call president red is what our most popular red is in hibiscus. That one there, I definitely don't want to cross pollinate because that's already in the genes probably down the line. And you'll probably get some reds. You might get a hundred seeds. This would probably only produce, if you were to get hibiscus, it probably produces anywhere from five to 10 seeds in that. So how will you know when this has seeds? You have to wait until it closes up like this no, and then check it? Okay, or? so it'll close up. When we just did the video on the Bidens, the little white flowers, it lost its flower petals. Mm -hmm. So once it loses its flower petals, it took the attraction away to the bees. The bees are probably not gonna go to that flower bud after the petals fell. After a while, it's gonna, it's gonna season for a while. So this will wilt out. If it doesn't pollinate, the whole stem will probably fall. Hibiscus are hard to pollinate because they tend to fall off on their own anyways. So it's hard to get a seed pot off of it, but that some of them do produce seeds. So if you really wanted to play with it, you'd have to play with more than one to try to get it to work. There's other plants that are very e easy. Amaryllis, if anybody's tried amaryllis, is very similar, only its male parts come to the side. So you can break off a piece of that and go rub it on the female part. A lot of them you can stick with the same, they can pollinate with the same flower the male parts and the female parts together on the same, it's not gonna hurt the plant. You're probably gonna, if it was a red one, you're gonna end up with red. If it's orange, it's gonna be orange. Cause you're sticking with controlled environment at that point. Again, you could have a weird one that does come out. That's how variegation sometimes might work out. When you do all this stuff and all of a sudden one grows and gotta have a variegate. I had a weed out here last year that is a blue mist flower. To us, it's a weed. To the middle, mid United States, it's used to attract the butterflies and stuff. But one of them seeded out here, just loose in the yard and I found it and it was variegated. I saved the plant, but then never followed through with it just because we get busy with it. But and so last week we learned that variegated means there's a genetic deformation or... Basically, right. yes. Okay. Something missing in the trait of the plant that caused that, or maybe it wanted that. There's, nobody really knows. So, so let's go over to this begonia because it's already gone through the process of all of it and we can see the seeds in it too. Okay. So. 